Next up on the Litfest channel is the author of a novel that won the Woman's Prize for Fiction in 2019 and was selected by no less a person than former President Barack Obama as one of his favourite summer reads for 2018. It was also selected by Oprah Winfrey for her book club. She was highly enthusiastic about the storyline and the characters. The book is entitled An American Marriage and the author Tayari Jones is here with me today in the Emirates studio. I'm here to talk about your book which I've been reading, American Marriage, and uh, absolutely brilliant. Um, tell us about it, tell us about the plot, tell us about the characters, tell us about the idea behind it. American Marriage is a story of a young couple, they're basically newlyweds, they've only been married 18 months when the husband is arrested for a crime he doesn't commit. They are a very successful couple, he's a businessman, she's an artist, you know, they, everything was going their way until this calamity strikes and it strains their marriage. And the question of the novel is, you know, how, what, how long should you wait for love? Would you wait for love? How do ordinary people manage when they come against something as massive as the criminal justice system? What is the way forward? And it, this is your fourth novel, correct? It is. Um, so are each of your novels, are they standalone or are, is there any continuity between them? Um, no, each is separate. I guess the thing that binds them together is that they're all set in Atlanta. Atlanta. Your hometown. My hometown, my natural habitat. Yeah. So how long has this book been in the planning stage? How long have you been working on it? It took me six years to write this book. Six um, years. I wrote a grant to study at Harvard to study um, wrongful conviction. And when I was there, I learned a lot about wrongful conviction, but I didn't have the heart and soul that makes a novel. You know, a novel, if it's any good, is about people and their problems, not problems and their mm. people. But I was in a shopping mall and I saw a young couple arguing. The woman was splendidly dressed. The man, he looked fine. She looked great, and he, she said, Roy, you know you wouldn't have waited for me for seven years. And I was intrigued. Mm. And then he said back to her, I don't know what you're talking about. This wouldn't have happened to you in the first place. And I was just struck by their conflict, and that's how I got the idea to write about a couple separated. And that was the starting point. That was the starting point. Gosh, I, I wonder if that couple knew or know now that they were the catalyst for this book. You know, I think about them sometimes, particularly yeah. since the main character in the book is named Roy, just like the couple. Yeah, yeah. And what about uh, the prison system and the justice system? Is that something that you take a particular interest in? Well, you know, they call it mass incarceration because the United States incarcerates more of its citizens than any other Western country. And I was just thinking of all the families left behind, the people who have a loved one who's, you know, so far away. How do you maintain a marriage? So I just kind of let my imagination really sink into that place mm. and try to walk in the shoes of these characters. Now you have some very big influential fans of this book, don't you? Do you want to tell us about that? <laughs> I well, guess you know who I'm talking about. Well. I guess the most exciting was I was driving my car one day, minding my business, and the phone rang, and the call had a blocked number, but I answered it for some reason. I said, hello, and she said, hi, this is Oprah. And I had to pull the car over to the side of the road. It was very you know, exciting to receive a phone call from Oprah, but also the vote of confidence in that she brought the book to her very large book club. And did you... Obviously, you met her and you went on the show to talk about the book. Yes, I did. And she was a big fan. It was very, it was very exciting and rewarding. Yeah. So, what did she have to say about the book? Well, she was just saying that you know, so many families are going through this problem of incarceration, and they don't have any place to talk about it. People have so much shame, and they keep it to themselves. And and bringing it to the book club, you know, we brought this private conversation to the public. It's interesting you should talk about that because uh, earlier in the week I and some of the members of the Festival of Literature went to the Dubai prison. I did too. Oh, you were there? No, I went separately to do oh, you went separately. a visit with the women. And you learned all about the writing program that's been yes. going on? Well, what was your take on all of that? You know, I've visited prisons all over the world as part of the work that I do 
And I find that people in prisons are eager for literature. You know, they're eager for visitors. I encourage everyone to reach out to someone who's incarcerated. If you make an in-person visit or just writing letters, it's so important. And it doesn't take much of your time, but you make a difference to your fellow human being. Are the people that you see on a regular basis uh, that you formed a relationship with who are incarcerated? Yes, I definitely have a number of incarcerated pen pals. Do you? Yes, yeah. I try to write a letter to someone yeah. at least twice a month. Uh, another fan of an American marriage was n none other than uh, ex-president Obama who took it on his holiday to read. How yes, about that then? That was also, you know, very affirming and, and exciting and the idea of promoting literature, you know, from from the top. Mm. I think it makes reading and literature more integrated into the culture and I think that's important and I think it is good for our shared humanity, particularly when we are so polarized now. I like the idea of us reading together, talking together about our ideas and feelings. Now correct me if I am wrong, but I believe you're a professor of creative writing. I am. And to what extent does this, um, the, the, the way in which you teach your pupils creative writing, to what extent does this, is this reflected when you write a novel? Well, one thing that's very helpful as a professor of writing, it means that I'm always thinking and talking about writing. And my students also kind of encourage me to live what I teach, which is that I tell them, you write the story that your heart tells you needs to be told. You don't write toward the market. You don't write for hoping to get a movie out of it. You write because you think there's a conversation that needs to be had, a story that needs to be told. And so they keep me honest. This is, I thought, a great book for book clubs. I mean, there are book clubs all over the world, just groups of people meeting together. They read the same book and then they get together over a coffee or tea and discuss it. Because you, right at the back here, you even give some some uh, a reading guide and some questions for people to raise in the book club make it so easy for everybody you know i think books are i like i think reading is something you do alone but when you get to talk about the book with someone else it becomes a way of bonding coming together and your friend may notice things in the book you didn't notice and give you a richer understanding mm. of the work I am a member of four book clubs myself. Are you? Yes, yes. I am. Oh, great. And uh, are they associated with the university where you teach, or are they just a group of friends together? Well, there are four. So there's one I'm in that's associated with the university. There's one for women who are in my neighborhood. I belong to one that is a virtual book club online. And then my mother and I, we are a book club of two. Oh, really? Yes. And what, yeah. do, what does your mom think of your novels? Well, she likes them. For the most part. For the most part. <laughs> <laughs> Phew. <laughs> is, she, is she quite a harsh critic of yours? I mean, does she take you to task? O occasionally she does. Yeah. However, if someone else takes me to task, she'll take up for me. Oh, right. She is the only one allowed to take me to task. <laughs> that, that's what mums do, isn't yes. it? Um, you, you mentioned earlier that you write because you love writing and you should not think about things like, is it going to be made into a movie, but um, I, I, do you secretly hope that one day this will appear as a, as a movie? Has it been optioned? Oh, well, yes, it has, it has been optioned, and perhaps it will one day make it to the screen, but I hope so. But I feel that even if it doesn't, I am so satisfied with the reception and the way that it has connected with readers mm -hmm. all over the world. And I feel that to ask for anything more, how could you? Have you secretly thought of who might play the leading characters? Everyone asks me that. No, I just secretly hope that it, if it's a movie, that I can be in it in some small way. Mm -hmm. Just give me one line. I just want <laughs> one line. I'm sure they will. I'm sure they will. Um, this has been six years in the making. We're not going to have to wait another six years for another book, are we? I hope not. I have hope you, not. Have you got something underway now? A little bit. It's coming together, kind of. I feel that novels are so mysterious. It's almost like love. Like I feel like me and this n current novel are just getting to know each other. Mm. I don't know if we're going to make it. I hope we do, but you'll be the first to know. Are you out and about in shopping malls, eavesdropping? I can't help it. I can't, <laughs> I can't help it. I just feel like 
inspiration is everywhere. Is it? <laughs> okay. Uh, well, it's been marvelous talking to you, um, and it's lovely to see you here in Dubai. You're going to get a chance to have a look around before you go back to Atlanta. Absolutely. I'm going on a walking food tour this afternoon. Are you? Yes, I yes. can't wait. Wow. Well, you're in for a treat because I've done it and I, and it's really good. You visit lots of little ethnic restaurants that normally speaking you wouldn't give the time of day to, but once you're inside, food is magical. But please don't have any lunch because uh, other, leave plenty of space is what I'm saying. Okay. There Whatever we you go. say. Well, hey, it's been delightful talking to you. So let's just mention an American marriage. Would you like to hold it up in front of the camera? <laughs> yes. And the other books are, and I'll just mention them here, Silver Sparrow, The Untelling, and Leaving Atlanta. Yes. Available in all airport bookshops, I'm sure. I hope so. Thank you. Thank you so much. Lovely. Thank you.